Here at Nuvasive, we believe that spine surgery spans the entire episode of care. And today we're gonna to unveil a new concept in surgery, one that we call intelligent surgery. Intelligent surgery is the idea that we can add intelligence layers to pre, intra, and post-op decision-making and execution. And today, we're gonna to pull back the curtain on how we're applying intelligent surgery concepts to many of our existing procedures, including X360, P360, C360, as well as pediatrics and complex surgery, all enabled with Pulse. Today, you're gonna to hear from some of our physician partners, as well as our experienced product management team to learn more about intelligent surgery. And so, let's kick it to Dr. Alex Thomas to get things started. I think in my mind, this notion of intelligent surgery, really taking it to the next level in terms of surgical planning and surgical execution. I mean, it really is this entire episode of care for the surgical patient. So it involves, obviously, your preoperative evaluation, speaking to the patient, examining the patient, but then you know, you're, you're incorporating all of these, not only demographic data variables, but also spinal pelvic uh, uh, variables. And, and, and you're incorporating that into your decision making. Before it was just, all right, here's a patient, look at the MRI, all right, needs X surgery. There's so many more layers to it now. Um, and so you need technology that, that takes all these different inputs now and helps you package it to really facilitate your decision making. This is not just the same procedure. Uh, it's, it's, it's not just one size fits all for all the patients. You know, this is really taking all of this data into consideration, all of these subtle, these nuances uh, into consideration when we plan these operations um, so that it really can be patient specific. I know, and, and people are proving this with very robust data, that it matters. You know, especially, for example, when you take, take spinal pelvic parameters into consideration whenever you're fusing a patient. When you're mindful of that and you achieve the appropriate correction, patients just do better. Um, so intelligent surgery for me is, is, is taking it on a case-by-case -case basis, thinking about these patients individually and really giving them the surgical solution that they need. In the case that we're going to do today, um, this is a patient with a degenerative lumbar scoliosis. This is a patient with long-standing back and leg symptoms. She has uh, unstable spondylolisthesis at, at a couple different levels in her lower lumbar spine, but also a coronal deformity. Not a horrible deformity, but, but certainly one that needs aggressive correction, particularly given that her, her pelvic tilt is, is quite high at near 30. So um, my plan for today is to uh, do a complete reconstruction of the lumbar spine, so uh, anterior and posterior fusion from L2 to S1 in one position. And I think that this is really where you see the efficiency benefits that you can get from single position surgery. And then when you throw in intelligent surgery enabled by Pulse, allow you to accurately place screws simultaneously while, while the approach surgeon is working on the front. When we position the patient and set up the room, we're thinking about every step of the procedure as part of this, this surgical strategy of single position surgery. So you, you wanna minimize how much the C-arm is moving. You wanna minimize how much people are having to do around the room. You definitely wanna minimize how much you're moving the patient. And that's the benefit of this is that you never have to move the patient. So that's what we think about when we set up the room. And so once we get going, kind of reverse the workflow a little bit. You know, traditionally you would start working from L5, S1 and then work up. Um, but uh, as you'll see, as you'll see we, we change the workflow just a little bit. So I actually start with the x lift portion of the procedure. So We'll typically be able to do this with one incision centered over the three disc spaces that we're going to attack with the X-Lift. So we'll make the incision, um, we'll enter the retroperitoneal space, um, and then we'll dock on the surface of the psoas muscle with that first dilator. And then using the feedback, the neuromonitoring feedback that we're getting from Pulse, we'll traverse the psoas to dock on the lateral aspect of the disc space. And then um, dilate the psoas carefully, again, using the feedback from Pulse for safety, and then we'll insert the Maxis retractor. And then we just work very systematically, a very systematic but efficient way um, to work so that we minimize how long we're staying in that psoas muscle. Our goal is to have a retraction time of about 10 minutes or less. Um, so we'll clean out the disc space, 
we'll prepare the end plates, and then at this point we'll insert the modulus cage. And this, in this surgery, um, in this case, we're going to be using osseocell allograft um, um, for the anterior portion of the case. So make sure the spacer is inserted. Um, we know using um, the neuromonitoring feedback from Pulse, uh, as well as the TMAP monitoring, we know the viability of the nerves. Remove the retractor, and then we'll re just repeat that process at L34 and L45. So after that's done, we'll put a drain in the psoas, close up the incision, and then the next step will be to place the navigation pin in the iliac crest. We'll acquire the imaging data with the COs, with a spin from the COs, and then we'll plug that information into Pulse. So at this point, we have 3D navigation images ready to go uh, for the patient after the cages have been inserted. So at this point, we start to work simultaneously. And we'll call Dr. Medley into the room. He'll um, start the XA lift portion of the procedure down to L5S1. And I think you can really see some of the benefits right away. Um, he's very fast. Um, he can rapidly gain access to the retroperitoneal space in front of the spine. And I think a lot of that has to do with just using gravity to help with the dissection. And that's the main benefit of having the patient on their side. And then you see from there, it really just is a standard ALIF, direct anterior ALIF. Um, so while he's working on that approach, I'm using Pulse to place the posterior instrumentation um, with X fixation from L2 down to S1. If you just stop and think about that for a minute, it's remarkable. I mean, you have that entire portion of the case done um, before uh, L5S1 is even accessed. By that point, I'm ready to walk around the front of the patient. Dr. Medley's done his beautiful approach, and I can start the XA lift portion of the procedure with the modulus A lift cage. Um, and um, as you can see, there's, there's remarkable visualization of the anterior aspect of the disc space with the patient in lateral position. So usually the, this portion of the case goes super smoothly, 10 minutes to get that cage in with osteocell, and then again, return back to the back of the patient. So Dr. Medley will come in and close that incision. I'm starting to input data from the screw towers into Bendini. What's cool about intelligent surgery with, with Pulse is that the camera's right there in the camera that's already looking down over you. Um, it's just so beautifully integrated into this surgical platform. So it's very quick to input data into Bendini, get a custom contour of the rod, and it makes passage of those long rods so much easier. When I really reflect on these cases and, and, and these bigger cases where it's almost like a symphony, you know, you, 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 you have all these moving parts and they all come together in this perfect execution for this surgery, this super complex surgery. Um, and you do it in a way that I, I don't know of a more efficient or elegant way to do this. Um, and when I, when I reflect on that, and by the way, it's still, it still amazes me every time, it hasn't gotten old. But when, when I reflect on that, I, I really kind of think about kind of the trajectory of the past eight years working with Nuvasiv and, and how it's kind of culminated in this X360 surgical solution. Um, you know, we started with X fixation. We started to figure out a way to how to safely place screws in the lateral position. Um, then we thought, well, what, what's the other limitation of X lift? We don't have a solution for 5.1. All right, let's go out and build a solution for 5.1. That's X A lift. And then, and then you incorporate these enabling technologies, it really opens up the door. We're still just scratching the surface on what Pulse is gonna be able to do, in my opinion. So right now, we use it for surgical planning with IgA. Um, and obviously, there's the other intraoperative things like radiation reduction, but that plan, then taking that plan and using it to execute um, in the most accurate and efficient way possible, um, that's, to me, what it's all about. And then you think about, at least, what I hear they have planned for, for Pulse is taking all that data that you generate during the procedure, then linking that with outcomes down the road, and then you can really start to predict, okay, what worked? What didn't work? What's important and what's not important? What should we really be focusing on? So I think the future for that in the next couple of years is gonna be amazing. In 2022, we are continuing to build momentum with our C360 portfolio. We know that through partnership with surgeons like you, C360 is a foundation for future advancement in cervical spine surgery. 
We believe that there is excellence in data. And while these procedures may be some of the most common in spine, continued investment in research and in enabling technologies like Pulse will further enhance the safety and efficacy of these procedures. A great example of this is the Simplify Cervical Disc, our state-of-the-art arthroplasty technology that utilizes anatomic disc heights, physiologic motion, and radiologic design to deliver market-leading clinical results. In April of this year, a prospective multi-center study of two-level cervical arthroplasty with Simplify found that it showed a superior overall success rate when compared to ACDF. Cervical disc replacement is one of the most studied procedures in all of spine, and over the past year and a half, we have seen acceleration in adoption and the growing body of evidence that the Simplify disc is the most clinically effective disc in the market. We have seen double-digit growth in procedural volume in our ACDF platform over 2021, demonstrating the strength of our innovation and the success in focusing on addressing the most common clinical challenges, such as dysphagia, malalignment, and robust fusions. Our ACP plate, combined with our AMS inner bodies, like Cohere Cervical, and its proprietary Porous Peak surface technology, facilitates strong fusion, even for the more challenging three-level ACDFs. And lastly, we are proud to announce that Reline C has entered into a limited commercial introduction with additional availability throughout 2023. As I mentioned a little earlier, one of the opportunities we see is continued investment in enabling technologies like Pulse that will further enhance the safety and efficacy of spine procedures. Let's hear from doctors Paul Holman and Mike Wang on what Pulse means for cervical spine surgery. You know, this is a very exciting time to be a spine surgeon. There are so many amazing new procedures that we all wanna do that can change the lives of our patients for the better. It's hard, right? Because the surgeries we do are difficult. I'm about to go do a very difficult cervical reconstruction. And I can tell you that understanding where you are in the body and being able to do the surgery safely and efficiently is difficult. And this is where I think enabling technologies, whether they be image guidance, whether they be robotic, whether they be something that gives data and analytics on what we're doing is incredibly helpful. Right now we're sort of flying by the seat of our pants, which is amazing. But when we have the ability to leverage technology to make these surgeries better, safer, more accurate, um, that is gonna really change things for the type of operations that we're all gonna be able to do for our patients. I agree 100% with, with, um, with Mike. So enabling technology such as Pulse, you know, which I've had the, the privilege of using over the past eight months, uh, really give us the ability to precisely uh, execute our plan and do it with um, safety in terms of, uh, in the cervical spine, placing C2 pedicle screws, placing you know pedicle screws in the subaxial cervical spine. So we're pushing the boundaries of what we try to do uh, from a biomechanical perspective uh, with these types of technologies. So uh, I agree with Mike, this is you know a huge part of the evolution uh, of the surgeon. And so um, one of the things that I've seen uh, since you know using the pulse for some of my cervical cases is, okay, I've got this, this great technology, you know, do I really need it? What, what can it help me to do that I can't do with uh, regular fluoroscopy um, or you know, freehand technique? Uh, so we've done some things both in the anterior cervical space, uh, such as using the alternating feature. So uh, one of the most important parts of doing a cervical disc replacement is getting the implant in the proper position uh, to help the biomechanical um, you know, uh, features of the implant work properly. So on that AP picture, we use the alternating feature uh, of pulse to be able to subtract out the retractor and see exactly where our trial is and then place the implant you know, perfectly in the midline. Uh, the cervical spine is pretty flexible, so um, you know, anterior navigation is something that I, I do actually think would be helpful, and we're trying to come up with creative ways of, of referencing. But for the cervical disc replacement, just the, the alternating feature and then obviously using neuromonitoring as well has been uh, quite useful. I think the future holds incredible promise, and this is where I like where Nuvasiv is going with the Pulse program enabling technologies to really do the moonshot surgeries. And when I think of that, I think of three different groups within posterior cervical surgery. The first is the incredibly complex cranio-occipital junction um, 
fixation and anatomy and decompressions. And those are beyond the reach of some surgeons. So if you have the ability to really understand that anatomy live, to really get the feedback you need to know where you are, to be able to actuate on it, that's incredibly powerful. The second area is in cervical deformity, which is really becoming better understood nowadays, although we still have, uh, we, we still find ourselves lacking in a lot of it. So how do we plan and execute on a surgery in the cervical spine the way we do say in a thoracolumbar spine. This is again where an area that Nuvasiv is going with pulse might offer new vistas for us to do really, really elegant cervical deformity surgery. And the third is one that I tried to breach about 20 years ago and really didn't get very far, which is in the world of MIS cervical surgery. And it seems like an oxymoron, but, right? But what if you could do all of your cervical fixation posteriorly? Wouldn't that change our ability to get around the problems of axial neck pain after posterior decompression and fusion, wouldn't that allow us to do things that would be really exciting and much more minimally invasive than we do today? So I think when you think about it in that regard, in five or 10 years, I'm hoping that we're going to be doing surgery in a very different way with the help of uh, companies like Nuvasiv, with the help of technology like Pulse. And I think we're all going to be the better for it. Open T-Lift to less invasive procedures, Nuvasiv has access, fixation, and inner body solutions to treat the wide spectrum of patient pathologies and surgeon preferences. Looking back on the last five years or so, we have made significant innovations in the posterior space. And looking forward, we don't plan on stopping that momentum. We are continuing to innovate on existing products and procedures, all while adding new ones to our already robust procedural lineup you're gonna see significant innovation in our portfolio between growth of our advanced material science inner bodies to the launch of our Nuvasiv tube system. We are continuing to push the boundaries of spine surgery. With that, we are excited to launch our P360 portfolio. P360 is a comprehensive portfolio of pathology and surgeon-driven solutions to deliver the best possible patient outcomes from prone patient positioning. The portfolio provides access, inner body, and fixation options that are designed to work together to fit varying patient anatomies and a wide variety of surgical preferences. Now complemented by the launch of Nuvasive Tube System, or NTS, we have rounded out our access portfolio to include MIS T-Lift and MIS decompression. Historically, tubular approaches have remained relatively undifferentiated. That is until now. With the support of our esteemed design team, we have created a tube rack that enables surgeons to remain in control. The cranial and caudal and medial lateral rotation capabilities of the arm can provide extensive range of motion, enabling workflow efficiencies, all while enabling better visualization. With the addition of this minimally invasive tubular approach, our comprehensive posterior portfolio can address a multitude of surgical approaches from open T-lifts, mass T-lifts, MIS T-lifts, and prone lateral surgery. We are allowing surgeons like you to reimagine what is possible with prone surgery by the expansion of our P360 offerings. I'm excited to introduce one of our design surgeons, Dr. David Yam, as he shares his experience with the Nuvasive Tube System and other components of our P360 portfolio. I obviously train open like most surgeons, uh, train how to do these procedures maximally invasive, but uh, also had the advantage of working with Kevin Foley, uh, learning the minimally invasive procedures uh, in Memphis, and was able to really tell the difference between how patients were doing uh, on, on day one. You know, how quickly they discharge, how much pain they have, uh, the complications were entirely different. Um, just you could see that all firsthand. So having training in both was uh, really critical to uh, um, to to make the transition. So you know the tube systems haven't changed much in the last 20 years. I was there when the first tubes were introduced, and really no major changes uh, in the system for a long time. Um, and so we kind of started this project with the idea like how can we make a better version of this that meets the needs of T-lift surgeons, meets the needs of decompression surgeries, and meets them better than the current systems can provide. The mobility of the tube is one of the main uh, drawbacks. 
All right, currently you're, you're kind of restrained and moving the tube is difficult and challenging. Um, and then uh, our procedures have changed. Like we're doing more complex surgeries through these small ports now. Having the ability to look up, look down, uh, look all directions, look more medial and more lateral is critical and none of the current systems dealt with that. So that was one of the main things that we looked at. Visualization is key um, because with minimally invasive, you, you can't um, uh, you know, you can't tell exactly where you're working without using fluoro or navigation. And um, uh, being constrained to a, a smaller area often meant you couldn't do a bigger decompression. Uh, you would revert back to open procedures. And so the, the pro of uh, being able to really look around and to see is that um, you can then, um, you know, do anything you need to do through a tube. I and mean, there's a little bit of learning, but as you learn uh, what it can do, uh, and how much quicker you can do it. Uh, yeah, you do gain downstream advantages. Um, the OR is more efficient to really uh, optimize the surgery for what we're doing now. Uh, the system also has a tube rack. Um, it lets you uh, make very quick adjustments. It connects to the tube easy, which has always been a struggle with the pr prior generation tube systems. And, um, what it does for me in the OR is I can, um, you know, make a very rapid on-the-fly adjustment without having to uh, do a lot of work. Um, but I can get to areas I couldn't get to before. Uh, do complex cases. Do far lateral discs. Do pretty much anything. So we, uh, you know, designed tubes uh, of all types. We designed uh, cervical tubes, shorter, smaller tubes for small decompressions, and we also designed tubes, large tubes for things like T-lift and everything in between for lumbar. So you can do pretty much any case with this set. Um, we also uh, made a, a beveled and slotted tube, which allows you to reach farther and, and reach across midline better um, by dropping your hand. And it just works better than a, a semi-constrained tube uh, does. But when we started this project, we realized that minimally invasive decompressions require special tools. And we, so we designed every tool to really be able to address uh, decompression. And so there's a micro excavation set that will address your needs. You know, mass T-lift system is a great system for T-lift, uh, but um, it, you know, some patients, uh, the retractor angles, the complexity, a revision case, there's a bunch of reasons why a tube system uh, uh, works complementarily with that. And so uh, we designed this tube system to work really well with the P360 uh, portfolio, uh, you know, working with prone lateral, working with mass T-lift. You can use it in combination with any of these technologies to do your work prone. Prone uh, P360 procedures allow you to do everything in one position, which is great. You avoid a flip. Um, you can uh, place screws in a, in a very familiar way. If I have a, a, a really diverse portfolio, the P360 platforms, A-lift platforms, uh, and I can combine them uh, to the patient that's in front of me in clinic and in front of me in the OR, I can deliver the, the best solution for that patient. So having a really diverse portfolio does that. One of the challenges to minimally invasive surgery is just the, the learning curve. Everyone knows it exists. It, it exists with open surgery too, but we just don't think about it because that's the way that we learned it from the beginning. Um, so it's something that can be learned. We were developing an entire uh, array of educational programs to work through tubes to do T-lift, to do decompression. Uh, it, it's a huge part of, of surgery moving forward. Uh, your patients want minimally invasive surgery if they can have it and uh, we're building an a educational series that'll support surgeons that want to learn it. As you all know, spine surgery is not one procedure or patient position fits all. The Nuvasive X360 portfolio is designed to provide you with comprehensive pathology, anatomy, and surgeon-driven solutions to deliver the best possible patient outcomes. Our core anterior lateral procedures, supine A-lift, x lift X-lift, X-fixation, and X360 SPS have all been designed through and validated by clinical data. We at Nuvasive believe the support of strong clinical validation is vital to advancing care for patients, and we continue to support further research in this area. 
Our innovation has been and continues to be informed and guided by the clinical efficacy of our procedures and products, underscoring our commitment to our surgeon partners and their patients. Since XLIF launched, we have seen the data support improved clinical outcomes when compared with traditional approaches, improve restoration of sagittal balance, reduce morbidity, continuing to support the clinical efficacy of the procedure. X360 SPS is enabled by XALIF, XLIF, XLIF Crestline, and X Fixation. The ability to bring these approaches into an efficient operative workflow while keeping the patient in a single position allows surgeons to craft patient-specific treatment plans for pathologies across the thoracolumbar spine. The current base of literature surrounding X360 SPS reflects reduction in OR time, shorter hospital stays, less time under anesthesia for patients, improved efficiencies and workflows in the OR for surgeons, reduction in perioperative costs for the hospital, reduction in postoperative ileus complications with the utilization of XALIF, and the removal of complications associated with intraoperative flips. I'm excited to introduce Dr. Aaron Buckland, joining us from Melbourne, Australia, to discuss X360 SPS and what it means for the future of spine surgery. In broad strokes, when adopting a new procedure, you want to improve outcomes. Now, whether that be uh, higher fusion rates, better uh, alignment restoration, whether it be that you feel there's a faster recovery, that you need to know that there's going to be a benefit because you've got to worry about a learning curve as well with any new adoption. So you've got to feel that the results at the end are going to justify that. Uh, specific to XALIF, really where I came into this was I, I saw all the benefits of anterior posterior fusion. However, the problem was time. It was the flip. Uh, it was the cost. They were staying longer in hospital. Anterior exposures were larger than what they were in a lateral position. And so when I started to look at this, it was really about how do I turn all the benefits of minimally invasive surgery into the gold standard of anterior posterior fusion. And that's where I realized I could do two things at once. I could instrument posteriorly while we did the exposure. Uh, and then we really, through our adoption, learned that actually in a lateral position, it's less exposure you need to perform to get to the disc. So the recovery was easy. There was less bleeding. We didn't see ileus after this. So where it came from was trying to make sure that I could be more efficient in the OR uh, and that I could give the patients the best results of, of fusion and alignment restoration. But along the way, we found these other, other things that I think have been actually just as beneficial to patients. So I think that that was the first part of, of proving this concept of X360 and that we can get better results with, with single position anterior posterior fusion. Uh, really what we wanted to look at was that initial perioperative metric. We didn't want to wait for the two years to, to show the data because uh, there are many patients that could benefit from the procedure earlier than that if you could at least show the perioperative safety and that you were still achieving what you were achieving with a regular anterior posterior fusion. So that data showed us that uh, we, we reduced our operative time substantially. It was by three hours. And a, a lot of people struggled to believe that because they felt that the flip only took 15 minutes. Really what's involved in repositioning is not just the flip. You, you wait for the other person to close the wound and then you take off prep and drape, you decannulate, you take out anterior monitoring lines, you reposition, you reattach, you reprep and drape, you do another exposure and then you close again at the end. So there were all these things that we were doing in series that you could actually do in parallel and that's where the time savings came from. Uh, as a direct result of the fact that there was less exposure, less operating time, patients were up and mobilizing faster, they were using less opioids, they were going home two days earlier. I think when, when we started doing lateral A-lift, the, the, we had a barrier to entry when it came to vascular surgeons. Certainly I did at my institution because he didn't feel that he wanted to go through another learning curve. Uh, so it was important to demonstrate that with this new way of doing an A-lift in a lateral position, that we weren't getting more complications. So thankfully I had a good surgeon partner at, at NYU who helped me go through that curve. Uh, importantly, it did show there was no difference in vascular injury rate. One of the concerns of the vascular surgeons was if there was a vascular injury, how can I manage it in a lateral position? Uh, and certainly we found that often the exposure was much easier because the, the bottom side of the vessel falls out of the way. 
Um, so, uh, so, and the retroperitoneal exposure, the preperitoneal exposure is much easier because the, again, the belly falls down and actually opens that exposure for you. So that was important to give that message to help vascular surgeons in their adoption. Uh, the ileus uh, point was actually, again, a flow on effect of this, the unilateral position. Again, gravity helps exposure. You're not retracting your abdominal structures as much. So there's less tension, uh, there's less time, uh, particularly time under retraction. And this is all translated into less ileus. And I believe that as well as the reduction in opioids are why we're seeing this reduction in ileus. And it's something we really aren't seeing anymore with our anterior exposures. The fixation portfolio is fully integrated across our procedural solutions, C360, X360, and P360. Combined with enabling technology, specifically Pulse, Nuvasive is committed to continuing to advance technology, streamline workflows, and facilitate surgical efficiency, ultimately improving the level of care we offer to patients. With the release of Reline in 2015, the system extends beyond traditional posterior fixation solution to deliver an enhanced surgical experience, providing flexibility in preoperative planning and interoperative workflow. Efficiency is afforded through intuitive, ergonomic instrument design and consolidation of surgical steps without compromising clinical effectiveness. Confidence is earned through our thoughtful approach to engineering, an enduring commitment to quality, and an extensive global clinical track record. Our dedication to understanding and addressing the clinical challenges surgeons face and the varying patient pathologies they encounter is evident through the ongoing investments made in the Reline platform. From our relentless expansion and implant offerings, with key additions including traction, mod, fenestrated, and now the introduction of Reline Cervical to our focus on innovative instrumentation to streamline workflows with console, power, and power final tightening, we've gone another step further to optimize OR efficiencies with one truly comprehensive fixation platform. Reline Cervical incorporates the intuitive design principles in Reline to deliver instrumentation and implants that allow for a seamless transition from the cervical to thoracic junction. With the addition of Reline Cervical to Reline Small Stature and Reline, we now have the breadth of solutions to make posterior fixation surgical workflows and interrupt decision making that much easier. Next, Dr. Tyler Koski will discuss his experience with Reline to address a complex deformity from occiput to pelvis. I'm gonna discuss a patient of mine. She's now a 77 year old female. She initially presented to me in her early 70s with a degenerative thoracolumbar kyphoscoliosis. This was significantly painful and bothersome to her, and we ended up putting her through a fairly extensive surgical correction. We did this with a reline system. Uh, it, we used a combination of the technologies to give her an outcome that was quite good. She did well for many years, uh, was very happy with that result, and still is happy with that result to this day. Unfortunately, with rheumatoid arthritis, we can see progression of disease in other areas, and she began having significant degenerative cervical issues. We managed that non-surgically for several years and eventually she began having a progressive kyphoscoliosis of her cervical spine that became partic particularly problematic. In discussing the solution with her, we discussed options including correcting the cervical spine and stopping at the proximal thoracic spine versus connecting all the way down to her pre-existing construct. We discussed the motion restriction and the changes that you get from those two different operations. In the end, she had fairly significant degenerative changes throughout her mid thoracic spine without a lot of residual motion. So we all elected an extension of her previous fusion up to her C2 level. This was done with a combination of the original Reline and the Reline C implants. The combination worked seamlessly together. Fortunately, we were able to connect into the old construct without much difficulty, do some small osteotomies and give her a nice correction and decompression of her nerve roots. That procedure uh, went well for her as well. We had a nice correction of that overall alignment. Unfortunately, she suffered a fall, which was quite significant and ended up with a cranial cervical dissociation, a fairly rare injury that we see uncommonly in all settings, mostly in settings of high-speed trauma, but she had a significant neck pain and a clear dissociation on her CT and her, her MRI. That necessitated a subsequent surgery where we extended her to her occiput, now taking all motion from her spine. Fortunately, again, we were able to easily link into that system, uh, leverage some of those tools to get a good, appropriate alignment of that cranial cervical junction, and really align her entire spine since we had her fused from her occiput down to her sacrum pelvis. 
Luckily, she's done quite well from that. And despite the motion restriction, is functioning very well, is neurologically intact without any significant nerve root compression or pain, and really has done quite well from a fairly significant operation. At Nuvasive, we believe that intelligent surgery and ultimately improved and more reproducible patient outcomes begin with your clinical education. Our primary objective is to provide you with a truly differentiated experience, placing emphasis on global accessibility, competence-based procedural learning, and the continued development of our faculty and commercial teams. We are continuing to expand the reach of our programs globally, most recently with the opening of our Singapore Experience Center. This new location will provide surgeons across the Asia-Pacific region with the opportunity to train with faculty surgeons and serves as a dedicated post-demonstration site for hands-on learning with the technology. From Brazil to Australia, Sweden to Singapore, and our East Coast to San Diego Experience Centers, we offer remote and in-person cadaveric trainings, extensive online learning models, faculty mentoring, and education that extends beyond your course. When you partner with Nuvasive CPD, you aren't training on a specific product, but on a holistic procedures, including complex deformity, CTDR, less invasive anterior and posterior procedures, and single position surgery. All supported by our comprehensive X360, P360, C360, and posterior fixation portfolios. Whether you are just starting your residency or been practicing for years, through our competence-based learning, we customize your learning experience to meet you where you are in your practice and provide you with the knowledge and confidence to treat your patients with surgical plan that best fits their needs from any approach. On behalf of Nuvasive, our surgeon faculty and global CPD team we look forward to partnering with you and your continued education and improving patient outcomes around the globe. Now, I will pass it back to Doug to close out the event. Thank you, Vinicius, and thank you to all of today's presenters. You heard how our comprehensive procedural portfolios, data-backed innovation, and clinical professional development are advancing our philosophy of intelligent surgery. The enabling technologies in Pulse being used across the spectrum of cervical and thoracolumbar procedures, a growing CPD program with surgeon experience centers going global, and a dedicated scientific affairs team adding to the amount of clinical data around all of our industry leading procedural solutions. There's more work to be done, but we believe that together we can make surgery more intelligent. From selecting and executing the right procedure to delivering the right outcome, we share the same goal with you to change more patient lives. In closing, thank you for joining us. Stay safe and take care.